Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and you'll see we've got another Fog of War puzzle for you today. I am always so thrilled when one of these puzzles gets through the testers because I love these. Uh, if you've never seen them before you may be wondering well, how on earth is this a Sudoku puzzle? Well the idea is that if you can place a correct digit, so imagine we, we, we got this digit and we put it into the grid, it would reveal, it would clear the fog all around the cell. And the important thing to remember is you can therefore cheat. If you were to type in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 into this cell, it would one of them would be correct and it would reveal the contents of box 5. But that is cheating. Do not cheat. The idea is that we can simply deduce uh, real digits from the white squares we're given. It's just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful uh, innovation in the Sudoku world. Uh, and this puzzle is called A Slingshot in the Dark by M Nasty 2 And I think, I want to say that these uh, little arrows here, these bent arrows, are, I think there is a constraint in variant Sudoku called Slingshot. I'm not sure I've ever done a Slingshot puzzle, but I want to say that Stefan Bura invented it. I might be wrong about that. Um, but anyway, this this is the puzzle we're going to have a go at. Apparently, this is is not that difficult, which means it will be similar to Walk in the Mist by Directionary, which I did a few days ago. And this one, let's let's get the current count. This has been solved now nearly sixteen thousand times, um, which is a testament to Directionary's skill in making a fog of war puzzle that is so approachable. Uh, it's just absolutely, I mean, th this this last few days on the channel, I mean, if you if you want to get your friends or colleagues or acquaintances into Variant Sudoku, just direct them into the videos this week because the puzzles have been off the charts. Yesterday's puzzle, let me just show you this, Coordinate Arrows by Pietato. This is one of the best Sudokus I have ever seen in my life. It is unbelievably beautiful, the logic in this. And... And it's, it's wonderful as well, because when you first read the rules, you think this can't possibly have a solution. And yet it does. And the way the solution unfolds itself is just remarkable. Um, anyway, I'll read you the rules of a slingshot in the dark in a moment. What do I have to tell you first? Let me look at my list. Um, I don't have any birthdays to do today. I do know that. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Now, this is important. Um, two things. No, three things. So we obviously are over on our Patreon pages. We've had May's monthly reward running for a while, which is Demono's Jewels of Osiris uh, Sudoku Hunt, which is a weird and wonderful combination of novel and Sudoku puzzles, where you have to solve the Sudoku puzzles in order to access the later chapters of the novel. Um, you've been loving that. And to say thank you to Demono, Mark and I are planning to have a go at one of Demono's horribly difficult puzzles. Now Demono is an expert at setting horribly difficult puzzles. Just go and look up a video called Everything is Roggen if you don't believe me. <laughs> um, anyway, so we were, we were going to try and do this yesterday but it took us forever to set up OBS because if, if we're both going to be on the script, the idea is we're going to do it as a collaborative solve. So we want to both appear on the screen. Um, we have to record both voices and anyway, it was just an absolute mug muddle. Um, it took us about two hours to even get it into a form where, where I think it might work if we try and solve a Sudoku. Um, so we're going to have to do that later in the week. Um, I don't know whether it will be tomorrow or whether it will be Thursday or even Friday, but look forward to that. It's going to be something very different. Mark and I tackling the same puzzle, same very difficult puzzle in a video. Um, then what else? Oh, and today is the kids' day as well. So over on Patreon, we are releasing a brand new kids' Sudoku hunt. The idea is that we're going to try and get the younger generation into variant Sudoku by showing them how fun they can be. Um, so very easy puzzles, but still interesting. And huge, huge thanks to the Paint by Numbers Institute, so the Asylum and Panthera, who've made the puzzles for that hunt. And that should be released, I guess, at 4 p.m. UK time. And just because it's for kids, that doesn't stop big kids from playing it. Do not, so don't, don't be put off. For some of you, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, that's all, that's all. Right, let's have a look at A Slingshot in the Dark uh, by M Nasty 2 uh, and I will read you the rules. So normal Sudoku rules apply. 
a digit on a bent arrow shows how many cells away the so it shows how many cells away the digit in the cell from which the arrow originates appears in the direction of the arrow that is a long sentence that i have now read twice because i read it before i turned on the webcam and it still is very hard to read thank goodness there is an example it says eg if row one column four was a three now i don't want to write three in there because if three is correct it will reveal the fog i'll put a little digit in so if this was a three then oh row one column four is a three sorry if row one column four is a three then whichever digit is in row two column four let's make that x <laughs> um, would also be in row one column one so that would be x right and that i see so this is why it's called slingshot because basically the x is going through the arrow and being catapulted three cells in this direction one two three so it sort of gets sl slingshot here so this digit will get slingshotted somewhere into those four cells depending on what this digit is right that doesn't seem like there's enough information there to actually get us started but i'm sure there is it then says under the fog a double-headed arrow is two overlapping slingshots and adjacent digits along a green line differ by at least five so there's going to be some german whispers lines hidden in the grid and we've got to make sure as it says adjacent digits along the green line differ by at least five so if this was a green line and this square here was a one this would have to be at least a six because it needs to be at least five different so it could be six seven eight or nine and that's how green lines will work when we discover them do have a go at the puzzle the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking um so right this one that one seems to be very constrained doesn't it because unless we're slingshotting off the grid that digit has to be a one or a two because it's going to catapult this digit into one of these two cells either that one or that one this one is one two or three this one is one two three uh, or four and this one's one two three four or five um now I'm just wondering whether I colour these digits. So that one goes somewhere here. This one. Ah, ah, oh, of course. Right, right. That one is not a one. <laughs> because for obvious reasons, if this slingshots this digit one cell, it slingshots it to here where it'll be in the same box as itself. So this is two, three or four. And that, that, that's going to apply even more here. This digit cannot get slung shot is that a word into either of those two squares so that is not a one or a two R ah so this is causing ah this is causing roping yes so now actually i'm going to color but i'm at, i'm not going to color these individually i'm going to color all of them one color let's make it my favorite color fluorescent green now because this digit gets transposed somewhere there, this digit somewhere there, and that digit somewhere there, these three cells are green. And that means these three cells are green. So this digit is definitely one of the... Uh, oh no, this, this digit is one of those digits. Um, but this pattern of greenliness causes what I'm calling roping, because now consider where those three digits go in this box. Well, these three digits are not green because the green digits go up there. So those three digits are blue. So these three digits are blue. Now, these three digits have to find a home in box two. And you get this, this sort of pattern um, emerging, which is called roping. And it happens whenever you can establish that one of these, one of these sets of three sort of transposes into a set of three in the next box over. oh right and that's lovely that's absolutely lovely because here is a very good question we can now ask ourselves slightly facetious but very good is yellow the same color as blue the answer to that 
I can hear you all chorus. It's no, Simon, it's not. Yellow is not the same as blue. OK, well, how could that be a one then? Because if that's a one, it's saying that the digit gets slung shot to there. And that would be saying that yellow and blue are the same and they are not. So this digit, I think, is a two. And this is where it gets exciting. <laughs> we get to clear some fog. We get the, the, the revelation of a whisper. We know those two digits are the same. Um, do we want to just make, maybe I'll just give that a little flashy colour to remind us that these two digits are the same. Um, now, what's this telling us then? So blue, ah, so blue doesn't include a two now. Because the, these digits, are, so those digits, we can take two out of these squares. So one, three, four, and five are the digits that go in here. One, three, four, and five. Now, we can immediately jump to this square. Ah, yeah, okay, I can see what's going on here. This, this square here uh, cannot be a five. And that is because one of the secrets of German whispers lines is that you can't put five on them. If we put five here, what would this digit be, given it has to be at least five different from five? Well, if we go up, we get to ten or higher. If we go down, we get to zero or lower. They don't work. So that square is not a five. And this square, because of, because this uh, sort of oscillating polarity along the whisper, because this is lower than five now, this digit will be higher than five. So that'll have to be six, seven, eight, or nine. But what's this digit then? Well, even if this is as high as it can be and we only deduct the minimum we could from it. So imagine this was nine and we only deducted five. We'd still get to four, which is on the bottom side of five. In, in other words, this digit is also from one, two, three, and four, and it's not two. So this is one, three, or four. So now green which is this stripe of digits. Oh, all we know is it hasn't got... Oh, we, right, we know... Ah! Ah, yeah, okay. So, look at those digits. There are one, three, four, five, quadruple, and five is in this row. So five is in blue, and it seems to only be able to go there. So that's five, and it was right, because it sort of cleared the fog. So this digit is now going into the corner, isn't it? Yeah, this is really weird. <laughs> the logic here is really weird, but it's, it's quite lovely. Because that digit now, well, this cell can't be a three. Because, because this digit, let's do some a little bit more shading. This digit is transposing into the corner using the five slingshot. So if this was a three, this digit would, would also be in the corner and would be a Schrodinger cell and have simultaneously have to be um, alive and dead at the same time, which is quite ridiculous. So this square here, well, so this square here can't be a three is the fundamental point. So that's a one. This digit is going there, and I don't, I don't have a clue what this thing's doing yet, but let's worry about that in a moment. There is now definitely a one and a five. Oh, I see. And the same point about this not being a three makes this not able to be a four because four would put a digit in the corner. So this is three. One, three, five go here. So this square here is four. That's huge. That is huge because now we have a monogamous digit on a green line. So there are two monogamous digits from the digits one to nine. You may not have known this, but it is true. Monogamous digits are digits that only partner up with one of the other digits. And a four only but ever partners up with a nine. It's the only digit that's five away from four that's a valid Sudoku digit. A six is a monogamous digit because it only partners up with one. Um, so this digit requires this to be a nine. And that doesn't affect this digit because nine is a very... Uh, uh, nine likes to go out and party. Let's just put it like that. Nine, nine, nine partners up with lots of other digits. So we can't tell what this is. 135. So this is 135 over here. Um, right, that digit goes here. I don't know whether this is a wise thing to do, to do all of this shading. 
within the bands, but we might as well. Uh, running out of colours though. I'm going to have to sort of almost restore fog for that one. Um, oh, I see. And Right, because I know green is 294 now, I might as well write that in. 294. But that digit is catapulting, isn't it? It looks like that wants to be... Oh, I see. <laughs> this is really cool. This cell is quite cool. Okay, I was thinking about this. I could see this couldn't be a 9, because that seemed to me to be catapulting this digit. Because this, this sort of double-headed arrow is taking this cell and throwing it down the grid. Now, if that was 9, it would be throwing it off the grid. So I can see that's not 9. But... What I've just realised is that this digit, which is a yellow digit, is being thrown this way by the right-hand pointing arrow. Well, we have, to th we have to throw a yellow digit onto a yellow cell. So if this was a 2, we'd be telling ourselves that yellow was blue again. Was it yellow was blue? Was that what we did last time? It's exactly the same, yes. Um, yellow is still not blue, so that's got to be a 4. And if that's a 4... Oh, okay. I, in, in my brain, I've been thinking I was going to prove those two were ones, but I haven't actually managed to do that. So one, two, th one, two, three, four. This square here is a one. Oh, bingo. Uh, this is not a one. This square. Ra ah. Ah. All right. So that digit is the same as that digit. It's the same as that digit. Because this digit is getting purplified over there. Um, now, we've also got the revelation of this little slingshot to deal with. This is, the, the red digit is a 4. That's what that's telling us, isn't it? So we can fill 4 in. We get left with 2s and 9s. This digit Oh, I suppose, right, now now we know what yellow is. So let's fill in yellow. Yellow is going to be 6, 7 and 8. Right, that must be tricky. That can't be. That's a 6, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, it can't be 7 or 8, or it's going to throw purple off the bottom of the grid. So that's lovely, because now purple goes down here, and purple is like, oh, purple is 7 or 8. So purple, we can get rid of 6 from, wherever it lives. So this is a 7 or an 8. This is a, it's a lovely rule, this, because it's sort of, it's throw, it is literally sling, slingshotting digits round, around the place. Um, right, and we've got the revelation look of a green whisper line. So again, using oscillating polarity, this has to be a low digit and it can't be one or four. So that's got to be two or three. And uh, this digit's got to be a high digit. So that's got, it can't be six now. Remember, six is monogamous and can only go next to one. So that's got to be seven, eight or nine. And we know it's not purple. Um, now, this square is throwing the purple digit. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, <laughs> okay. This cell is throwing purple down the grid. Where's it throwing it to? Because it's not throwing it there, because then there would be two purples in row nine. So the only thing this can be, I think, is six. Eight throws the purple off the grid, which is simply ludicrous. That did reveal. So now purple goes six down here, which is to there. And this means purple is over here somewhere. So purple is in one of those two squares. Purple's in one of these two squares. I'm going to I'm going to try and keep track of my purplage. I feel I feel that that's that's what the puzzle wants me to do. Um, hang on now. 
I've, I've seen this has got revealed. I'm just trying to see if there's something better I can do. I've also got revealed this little whisper fragment, but this could go anywhere. Um, oh, I see. Right, okay. Look, on, on this line here, there is a one. Now, there's a one here. So if the one joins with a three on this line, in either order, it's going to plonk a one into one of those squares and it's going to clash. So you can't partner the one with a three. We're going to have to partner it up with a five. Therefore, this digit becomes a three. And now, well now, <laughs> so now we know, we know the order. Because five digits below this square here, one, two, three, four, five, is purple. And that's not one. It's seven or eight. So what I'm saying is, if this square here was one and this was five, the slingshot would send this down onto that digit. So that's that we must do it the other way around. So I think this is one. This is five. The one gets transposed down there. This is going to reveal lots of stuff. Well, well, mm, yes, yes, look. This is a high digit, it's a seven or an eight, it's on the top side of five. So this is low and it sees one, three and four. So that is a two, I think. Yeah, we're getting, we've really, we've revealed the absolute lattice of uh, complexity down there. Um, okay. I mean, I can see this digit. There's, oh, I see, there's a seven, eight, nine, triple in this in this column because this digit can't be six because six is monogamous so that's got to be seven eight or nine and that seems to reveal a seven eight nine triple which means these squares are five and six um now the other thought i had was does don't i know yeah because this is a two-way uh slingshot so I've slingshot the one down here, but I've got to slingshot the five there, one cell down. So that's a five, that's a six, that's a five. I feel like we might know which way round this thing goes, which does, it's a very short stubby arrow or line. Hmm, actually, I'm not sure. Okay, so we're going to have to look instead. Well, we're going to have to do the complexities, aren't we? So what is going on down here? The... Right. <laughs> I don't quite know where to start with this. So this digit is throwing a 7, 8 or a 9 up the grid. So... And it's not a one or a four, so it's it could uh, uh, can it be a two? That would throw this digit to here. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm just going to put two in as a placeholder while I think about this. Could it be a three? That would be throwing this digit here. Again, maybe it can't be four, five. Five would be throwing this one, two, three, four, five. No, five throws it onto a two or a three, so that doesn't work, but it could throw it there, I think. So maybe that could be a six. Just checking I'm doing the counting right here. I think I am. Two, three, four, five. Oh, hang on. No. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, yeah, that does seem right. But that doesn't seem to tell me. I quite want it to go there. Hmm. Yeah, actually, that is interesting. I'm wondering whether that's the idea, is that I'm going to get sevens and eights somehow plotted round this grid okay well let's ah ah ha ah yeah look 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 I've, I've seen something right that cell is throwing this digit along the row so this can't be a two 
Because if it's a two, this it would get thrown over there and there'd be two twos in the row. This is very clever. So this is a three or a six that's getting thrown somewhere over there. Doesn't tell us what this is. I suppose this digit can't be that big either. One, two, three, four, five. So it is a one, two, three, four, or five. So it's only three or five because it sees one, two, and four. Right. That digit as well. Ah, yay. Oh, ah, bobbins. Right. Okay. This digit is throwing, a is throwing this cell a maximum of five. But it can't be one, four, or five. So this is a two or a three. There's a two, three pair in the column. Therefore, this square here is a five. And it liked that. It reveals some fog. That square there is a six. Oh, there's a wasp. Go away, wasp. Don't like that. Oh, it flew out. That's lucky. Um, now, um, what does this mean? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I now know which of these is purple. Because it can't be this one. Because this would transpose it into either this square or this square. Where it would see itself in the same row. So this is this can't be purple. So that's purple. Uh, which is 7 or 8. Oh, it's come back. I don't believe it. You flew out. How can you be so stupid, Wasp? What's going on over there now? Um, right, I've not put 9 in this column. Ah, so 9... 9 is getting trans... Oh, that's annoying. 9 is getting transposed, but it's either there or there. I don't really like doing that pencil mark because I won't remember. Um, the 6 is getting transposed, isn't it? The 6 is getting put exactly here. That's going to clear loads of fog. And it did. That's a 6 in the top row now. So now we get a seven or eight. I've not been looking for threes in the corner. Uh, we have not. Well, there's definitely not one in the top row. We still have the opportunity for one in the bottom. The bottom row of the grid. Um, six is in one of those two squares. How many sixes have we got? Loads. There are, yeah, there are four sixes looking at box seven, look. So, as I see that wasp in the corner of my eye, I'm going to write this six in. Um, go on, go out, go out. It did, I think, again. It's probably going to come back again in a moment. Um, right, there's a six here. How many sixes have we got now? Seven. Okay, so this, these are the last sixes. Now, okay, I got distracted then as well. <laughs> And, um, okay, I'm not sure whether I've used up all of these, all of my slingshots that I found down here. So there's a nine in one of those squares. What else have I got? Anything? Um... Hmm, not sure. Let me think. Uh, is this where we get totally baffled? Quite possibly. It has come back. I don't believe it. Um, maybe I've got to, maybe I've also got to plot, plot these digits, the, the sevens or eights that are uncolored at the moment. Is, does that seem like it might be a good idea? I'm not sure, but I think I'm tempted to do that. I think I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of my. I'm going to get rid of at least my red colouring up here because I, I can't see how that's transposing anything, or I'm using anything there that I've not used already. So those three digits can be red, and they are distinctly different from the purple digits. But are they actually, you know, can we actually do something useful with that? Um, I keep trying to look at, my brain is trying to look at this as a slingshot. And that is not a very sensible idea. Oh, this six. Yes, here we go. Here we go. 
I felt like, as that wasp was disturbing me, I felt like I hadn't extracted enough information from all of this, these slingshots. And I was right, because that digit is throwing this digit onto the red. So that is red. And that, therefore, is not 9, which means this is 9 in the column. Uh, that's a little bit underwhelming, isn't it? So, so this goes up here. One of those two digits is red. And what have we got left to place in this box? Three, four, and nine. Definitely a possibility for a three in the corner. No, no. Okay, remember that. Remember, there's a nine in those two squares. That's quite cool, isn't it? So that's not nine. So now there is a nine in the bottom row. Nine is nine is somewhat restricted in this box actually, because you've got nines here, nine here. There's a nine as a nine we can't see floating in those two cells. So there's not a nine there. So there's a nine in one of those two squares. And there's there's a oh and there's a nine in the fog here. Boom. Ah, didn't do very much. Revealed that square. Um, right. Okay, unfortunately. Oh, purple is in one of two places in box number four. Purple is in one of four places in box number six. And, oh no, come on. It would be good to know whether this square is purple, because... Wow, actually, if that square is purple, it might have to go there in this row. I'm not sure about that, but as I was looking at it then, I could see it couldn't go here. Ah, I'm not sure. Right, um... Five is in one of those three squares. Could we do? I know. I know. One of these is nine. Now this nine pencil mark is distracting me. I've got a horrible feeling. I'm getting stuck though. How do we get ourselves unglued? One of one of these squares is a seven or an eight, isn't it? Oh. Oh, I've just sorry. Yes, this green this green line is interesting because it can't have a six or a nine on it. So its high digit is seven or eight. So one of these is red or purple. But we don't. But 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 red and purple can be on here. So there is no four on this line because four would require a nine to go with it. So there is a four in one of those three squares. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to come back to this one. I think there must be some, some trickery we can do with, with what's going on there. So this digit, whatever it is, and it might be purple, is being slingshotted over here. Which means the actual digit you can put in here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Although it can't be 6 because that would repeat... So it's one, two, three, four, five, or seven. That's a big pencil mark. <laughs> I don't like that pencil mark. That does not feel like the... Uh, that's not the pencil mark of champions, is it? It really isn't. Ah, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. <laughs> okay, right. So now that... This six... 
How I see. Once I got the six here, and I got the six here, I should have used that then to transpose this one down here. I just didn't see it. But I have not used that slingshot, so that is purple. And that's really clever. Because now, not of me, I hasten to add, of M nasty too. Because now this is much more restricted. I spotted the restriction here, but couldn't see how to make this purple. But it is purple. And now, what digit can this be? It can't be one, because there's already a purple here. All of those are purple, so it can't be two, three, or four. And the only place purple can go in this row, in this box, is in that cell. So that cell is purple, and that cell, this cell here, is not purple. So this, and this is beautiful. This is so beautiful, because now we can't possibly have red on this line. So this is a two or a three. Uh, we might not know which of those is, but this is now red. So this is the seven or the eight, it's not four. This is two, three, or four. Um, so we've got sort of a two, three, four. Right, now, now by Sudoku, purple goes here. That's sort of false, isn't it? And this square, we can get the value of one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> And this square does all the magic you could ever wish for, because not only is it seven to slingshot the purple onto itself, it also tells us that the purple is actually an eight, because it now can't be seven, because... Oh, it does work as well. Look, we can just do that instantly. So will it let... No, it wouldn't. I, thought, I think because there's... Oh, maybe if I do that. Yes. So I can just fill in all of those. It's a seven-nine pair now in box nine and oh that doesn't tell me whether this is being I still don't know oh well, hang on this has been revealed whatever's going on there okay so what else what else have we got here uh, let me just mull this over for a moment I got all my eights and sevens. I thought that was going to do magic, but it doesn't really. I suppose this digit. Oh, I see. No, this digit's beautiful as well. The selection of the clues on the slingshots here is really lovely. Okay, so this can only slingshot something, a maximum of three cells. So it's a one or a three, because it can't be a two. Now, if it's a one, that means this square has to be a seven or a nine. But it can't be a 7 or a 9, because 7 and 9 look at this square. So that has to be 3, I think. That clears the, oh, clears the fog in the most unhelpful way. Um, this digit is 1, 2, 4 or 5. But that digit also has to go down there, doesn't it? So it's not 5, so it's 1, 2 or 4. And I don't think I can do better than that. Well, I can remove five from that cell. These two cells are the same digit, so let's find a way of recording that because of this slingshot. This whisper line can be still be two or three. That was this whisper line. Oh, I see. Because because we got a seven here as a result of our colouring. That can't be a three anymore because knowledge bomb three and seven are only four apart, not five. So that's not two. This is three. That's transposing the nine over. So the nine goes here. That fixes my nine seven pair. I think that might have just cleared some fog down here. It looked like it was trying to do something. Uh, this square here is not two anymore because there's a two in the box. Okay, now how did this nine seven jiggery pokery help us did it help us at all sevens we've got loads of sevens in the grid oh but uh, annoyingly the sevens still seem to be being recalcitrant okay that's very naughty of you sevens this three is giving me a two here no that's 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 kibosh the three in the corner down there which has become a nine ah Okay, oh, the three here does this stuff. So three and four go into the grid. Can we do this ordering? I don't know yet. Two is in one of those squares. 
and this row needs ones, fours, and fives, which so this is a one or a five only. It's one, four, or five. Bottom row needs one, two, one, two, four, and five. So this corner cell is one, two, or five. I'm still not quite seeing how... Oh, three goes here. Oh, no, three goes here. That's totally... Yeah, this three did for it, didn't it? We just can't have a three in the corner. That's become a one. So that we can do the three and the five in box number... In box number three. And has that done a lot more? Not yet. I still also haven't done the twos and the nines over on this side of the grid. What about those squares then? They are four and nine. So we haven't got that figured out. So we still need to put one, two and seven into this box, into those squares. And we know that's not seven. Is it something to do with this? Is there now a reason this can't be either double four or double one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is the short answer. Let's try 2, 4 and 5 in this column then. So this is 2, 4 or 5. Oh, there it is. Look, that square can only be a 4. So this square is a 2 or a 5. Now, has this 4 done any magic? Yes, it has. Look, 4 is there. And once 4 is there, it transposes itself to here. And that, that does the 4 and the 9. So that's going to do the 9 and the 2. Now we can follow through the colouring at the top. And that all gets fixed. The 4 up here does the 4 and the 3. Good grief. This is a beautiful puzzle, isn't it? 1, 6, 7. Okay, and these squares. Let's just put it in. And then we can, we can worry about whether we can get rid of some thingies. Can't quite see how to get rid of the thingies there. Um, so we need one, two, and seven here. So this is a one or a two. Uh, I still can't quite see how to finish this off. I think I'm going to end up with a very, very pencil mark grid. Oh, in this column, where does one go? There we go. So that's one, that's six. Therefore, this is five, this is five. This one, two pair is perhaps not resolved, but that's become a two. This has become something, a six, seven pair. We can do that. So six and seven go in, seven goes here. This go oh, the two at the top does the one, the two, the one. Therefore, that's got to be a two. This has got to be a one. And hopefully, we're going to be left with threes and fives in that order. Five in the middle of the grid, as so often seems to be the case. We click tick, and that is how to solve the puzzle. It's been solved four times since May the 12th, which is, well, that's one once a day. Not bad. Absolutely beautiful. That was a really clever idea. Very unusual fog puzzle. Or oh, very... And no, it's just an unusual rule set, slingshots. Um, I, I, I don't think I've done a puzzle with slingshots before. I really don't. But I like the way that the slingshots could be used to position the same digit around the grid in really weird ways. Um, it's, a, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a go. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.